Hey guys, this is Anthony from I Wonder, and I've had a lot of people asking if I could show my recipe for a sourdough. So I'm gonna try. Sourdough is like super healthy because there's no there's no rubbish in it. It's all like made literally from flour and water. There's no yeast in it. You basically make this thing called a mother, which is also known as like a starter, which you keep in the fridge, which looks all kind of gooey. And that is basically made of water and flour. So this thing we call the mother, it then feeds a thing that we call the leaven. And basically each loaf you make, you have to make this thing called leaven. And the leaven provides like the yeast and the rise and everything for the bread. Um, so what you want to do in advance, 12 hours before, six to 12 hours before you cook or start preparing your loaf, you wanna prepare the leaven to you, which is basically 83 grams of flour, strong white flour, you have to use like really strong, um, sometimes Canadian flour. So 83 grams of water, so even amounts of water and flour. So 83 grams of each. And then that will basically be combined with the mother. You want to use like 34 grams of the mother. So the mother feeds this. So you basically want to take your mother, not your mother, your leaven, and you want to stick in 194 grams into a bowl. So just zero your scales, stick this in, 194. Look how strong it is. That is literally just flour and water. Um, 134. It's really weird to work with, it's like loads of snot. Oh, 194, sorry guys. Stick that in. You wanna use 387 grams for a loaf. This is the strong white flour. So you want 387 grams of this. So chuck that in your bowl. Then you want to take some rye. This is a rye loaf. So it's probably like 20% rye, I reckon. So you wanna add 97 grams of this guy. So just zero your scales, add 97 grams. All the flour is in, the leaven is in. Basically at this point, you just add water. You don't add any salt. Salt you add in a second. Um, so take your water, the water needs to be like 24 degrees. You wanna add 310 grams. And then it'll start to look like a massive pile of sick. So it should look something like that. Now stick your hands in, get involved, and I will show you what it's like in one sec. My bowl looks like this. Um, scrape down all the dough you can see back into the bowl. Once you've done that, you let it sit. 20 minutes, see, so look, look at that. Leave it for 20 minutes, covered with something that looks like a tea towel. It's been 20 minutes and the loaf is starting to take shape. Here's our loaf that's come together. Should look like that, it's kind of not as gooey as it was, so it's taken a bit more shape. Um, here we have how many grams is this? It's 12, but I've done 13 because I love salt. Chuck in your salt and with your fingers or scraper or whatever you want to do, basically incorporate the salt until, until you can't see it and also until you can't feel it. So basically take it in from the sides if I were you. So wet your hand like I should have just then because now I'm just covered in goddamn salt. Wet your hands and kind of push them down the edges and just fold. Like that. Add some olive oil um, to this bowl. Don't add flour, don't add water, just olive oil. And kind of just swizzle it around. Make sure there's enough to cover the bowl. I just woke up the dog. Um, kind of that amount. I don't know if you can see that, but swish it around with your hand. Make sure the whole bowl is covered. And then, so it looks like that. Then we take our dough and stick it in the oiled bowl. So you want to cover this guy for 30 minutes, somewhere kind of room temp.
This guy has been sitting there getting delicious. Um, shouldn't look any different really. It might have got a little bigger. Um, it's got oil, it's looking delicious. This next stage um, means that you don't really need to need. A lot of bread you have to knead and it's kind of hard work. Um, and this recipe, some people need their sourdoughs, but everything I've read has said, don't need, no need to knead. So what you need to do instead of kneading is folding. And it's kind of important to get all the kind of consistency in the loaf um, and for all the holes, which are delicious when butter gets in them and they just taste ridiculously good. So what you want to do, grab what should be kind of nice and formed now um, from your bowl. Here it is. Um, basically, you don't want to you don't want to tear it. You want to let the the weight of the the dough kind of pull itself apart. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, that basically, lay it down in your bowl and just fold it. So you fold one edge over like that. You can see your finger marks in it, and then you get the next edge. Turn it ninety degrees, and then kind of do a similar thing. Don't tear it. Just let it drop. And then fold it again. Do that four times on each corner. Stick this back on. Wherever you've been keeping it, keep it there again. And in 35 minutes again, you come back to your dough. It's been 35 minutes for a second time. Um, and we're gonna do a second fold. It's starting to take shape, it's starting to look like something. Um, so again, the fold, well, the fold is basically just boom, twist it 90, kind of let it dangle. Fold it again. After the second fold, you leave it for 30 more minutes. Up top, wherever you've been keeping it, and then the really fun bit. And now we're gonna call, do a thing called pre-shaping. We're gonna take the dough out of the bowl, and then we're gonna start shaping it into a loaf kind of shape. Basically a circle. Um, make sure you flour your surface, otherwise you're gonna enter some sticky hell. So, sprinkle a little bit, you don't want too much because then it'll get incorporated into the, the loaf and that's not the vibe. So this bit's kind of weird. Basically what you're trying to do with your hands is scoop around the back and then pull it towards yourself. But first of all, we have to do one more fold. And this is kind of like, a, it's a bit different. Basically, I'll take you to like this. It should be nice and stretchy now. Um, and basically fold it in on itself like that. That's one. Twist it around 90 degrees and do the same this way. So kind of you don't want to tear it. You just want to kind of pull it away from itself, and it will, yeah, it's all super flimsy, which is cool. Nice and rubbery. So fold that in and again. Cool. Turn that round. So now you have a nice fold in one end and a nice smooth end. So put the smooth end upwards. You're aiming to kind of tuck under and then drag. Um, so you're, if this hand is holding the loaf, you're tucking under and then you're pulling back the loaf. It's a weird technique and it'll take a minute to actually master. Um, if your mind's not dragging right now. So just get a bit of water and stick it on your surface and that'll make it a bit stickier. Um, I might put too, too much flour down. So basically, scoop round and then drag. Scoop round and drag. And you'll notice it starts to kind of play ball a little bit, literally, and it turns into a ball. And what you're doing by keeping it super tight like that is making sure that when you cook it in the oven, it's gonna have shape and it's gonna rise and it's gonna um, actually look like bread. Leave that for 20 minutes. And um, this timing is really important, just 20 minutes. I'm actually gonna leave it for like 16 minutes because it's kind of warm. So stick your bowl over or a tea towel, doesn't really matter. And come back to it and we're gonna do another pre-shaping in a minute. So we're gonna do the pre-shape again. And you wanna fold again. So you're doing that thing where it's slack in the middle. Throw it on itself again. And then take both ends again. We're doing a bit of that. Like I said, don't kind of pull it, just let it do the, the flexing kind of thing. Um, 
you don't want to tear it at this point. Not a good idea. So, flip it back, flip that round, and then we get this side again, and we're pushing around and then pulling back. That's that motion again. Make it nice and tight, and when it feels good and you're happy with it, it should kind of look like a ball, kind of like this does. You'll see kind of bubbles and stuff. Basket looks like this. It's like a wooden, I don't know what material it is. I'm saying bamboo or something, super light. Um, you can either put the loaf straight into the basket with flour, or I actually use one of these basket covers. Uh, it's a piece of cloth, it's like casting or something, and it just makes sure that nothing gets sticky. Um, you want the flour to be in in the basket. I've put a little bit in, I'm gonna put a bit more in. Um, but it's gotta be super fine at this point. So take a sieve, I have a pathetically small sieve, um, and basically just tap it round. He's here, he's happy. If you're gonna pick him up off the surface, I picked him up from this side, and you're gonna plonk him down the other way, um, like so. And so you'll get kind of a rough texture on top. Um, and we'll remove some of this flour, sprinkle a bit of flour on, we get a bit more. Then this should look something like that. At this point, you can either prove it for like 45 minutes to an hour, depending on your climate. Um, if it's warm, go for the short time. Um, or you can stick it in your fridge overnight and it'll prove really slowly overnight, which I find is a really good option. So if you're cooking it, if you're doing the prep and things at night and it's like 10 o'clock, stick it in the fridge and bake it in the morning and then you get delicious bread in the morning. With this though, I'm just gonna let it prove 45 minutes in the kitchen and then we will stick it in the oven. At this point, you want your oven to be insanely hot. You want it, if it can go up to like 240, that's where you want it to be. Um, so stick your oven on at this point because it needs to be at temperature. You want to get one of these pots. Um, I'm not endorsing this brand, but they're really good pots. The Crusoe. Um, you can get cheap versions of them. It was a present from Josephine's mum. It kind of looks like that. Um, and that's gonna act as a little cooker inside the oven. Um, what, what you do with the lid, why you have the lid, is it traps all the moisture. You need a lot of moisture for baking. Um, and if you don't have moisture, you won't get rising, you won't, you'll just get a crap loaf. So it creates like an environment for it to fully grow. And if you don't have one of these, make sure you have an insanely hot oven and you might have a baking stone or something, something that pizza's made on, just a thick surface or a, a, what they call a cloche, like a Dutch oven, um, not that kind of Dutch oven. And hard surface, and if you don't have a lid, stick shit loads of ice in the oven. Sounds crazy, but it adds loads of steam. Or if you have a steam oven, if you're super posh, use steam. So, stick the oven on. Let this guy prove, cover him up, and then leave him to prove somewhere. 45 minutes, I'm gonna put the oven on. I'm gonna put this inside the oven so it also gets super hot with the oven. So what we'll do at this stage is get it out of this basket. And the way to do that is to be really careful. Uh, sprinkle a little bit of private flour in here, just in case it's not enough. One hand on here, and basically flip it upside down. And then as you flip it upside down, carry it over to the pot and go straight in with it. Don't mess around by putting it down here. That will make your life suck. So take it out. There he is. We're going straight in, being insanely careful. Um, you can see it in here, looking good. Like that. Lovely stuff. So guys, you have a really sharp blade. You can use a razor blade or an insanely sharp knife. Basically, you want to tear almost a centimetre into the loaf and create a little pattern. I'm going to do just two strips, keep it super simple. You don't want to drag through the dough, you just want to 
kind of touch the surface. Looks like that, just before it goes in the oven. Damn, girl. Goes in the oven. 25 minutes at 240 degrees. That's an insane hot oven. If you haven't got a lid for your pot, at this point, throw in like 10 ice cubes because you need all the moisture. Close it, take the lid off in 25 minutes. We've been in the oven for 25 minutes. It's looking like that. Now it's going to turn into a full looking gorgeous life when we put it back, let it crisp up for another 20 minutes. Did you hear that? That's the oven saying, I am done. Oh, that's a shot of steam. Um, that's what it could look like, should look like. Maybe yours will look a lot better. Um, if you take it out and put it straight on a rack and just let it Can sit. I eat it yet? You cannot eat it for at least 10 minutes, actually. Josephine, you meant yeah, to cover it up a bit at this point. Um, so that is how you make a sourdough, guys.